Welcome back. Well, you can relax. There's going to be no great white sharks jumping out at you in this video. Hello. Today we're going to be making an organizer for my quick change tool holders. These tool holders are for my larger lathe. And as you can see from the intro, they are drastically unorganized. Now I've done something similar for my smaller lathe. It's a really simple design. It just has these bits of angle welded onto a bar and they are the same width as the dovetail so the tool holders fit on there quite nicely. Down at the right hand end I have another area where I can put all my tail stock tools such as live centers, jewel chucks, and dead centers etc. The plan is to put the tool holder on the chip guard at the back here. So what I've done is measured out that distance I have and I've cut a stick to the same length and now I've laid out all of the tool holders on the bench here. I have purchased some more tool holders and they will fit into that gap in the middle there. Now there could be a bit of a problem. I've weighed all of the tool holders and all of the centers and the chuck and everything and it comes out to over 25 kilos. And that is a lot of weight that's going to be put on that chip guard on the lathe. So I might have to think of some other idea on how to mount this organizer so it doesn't load up that chip guard too much. I've got this piece of 50mm by 50mm angle. It's 6mm thick and that'll work really good for the job. I've got it on the bench here just over 10 degrees angle and that's how I'll set it up once I get it over to the machine. I found these scrap pieces of 40mm by 40mm angle. These are 3mm thick. And what I'm going to do is cut off these little short pieces. They will then get welded onto this bar at the back. And then the tool holder will sit on those. Now this little bit at the back here is the right distance for the next tool holder to come up against. And that gives me about a 10mm gap in between. I'll start by cutting these out. I need to cut 24 of these little angle pieces out. Once they're cut out I go over to the belt grinder and clean them all up and I'm also setting the width of these pieces to 41 and a half millimeters and that is a good fit for the dovetail of the tool holder. All of those pieces are now done and they're all round about the same height. Now I weld those pieces onto the bar and I start at the end here a little bit in. That gives me a bit on the side here for where the tool can overhang. I just put four kind of spot welds here. And then the next one is butted up against it and that's spot welded as well and so forth and so on. This is the last one to weld on, and then all those pieces are complete. I've got this sitting on the splashback, and it's level at the moment, although the camera angle may look a little bit different. The tool holders work beautifully on here. They just fit on, and you just lift them off again. Now I made two of them higher and longer here, and that is for when you have other tools which are wider such as a custom knurling tool or a custom parting tool. Down the right hand end, there are nine tabs that have been welded on the opposite way round. And those are for tools that are in the tool holder the other way, like boring bars or other end facing tools. As mentioned, I will be tilting this on about 10 degrees and I'm also going to be moving it back and I'll mount it on this post here. So it won't be mounted to the splashback. At the other end I'll have to work on what I'm going to do there because there's no post directly at the end like this one. I'm going to make up a plate that will be welded to this tool rack as well at the back here. And that will be on the same angle and I'll use it to put all my tailstock tools like the centers and drill chucks. This is 75mm by 5mm flat bar and that's what I'll use for the tailstock holder. I've drawn a couple of lines on here. This front one is where the tool holders overlap 
So I need to make sure that the tailstock tools are away from this line. The back line is where I'll put the tailstock tools and you can see it's been divided out into five places for five holes. That piece is cut off from a longer piece. I drill out the holes for the tailstock tools and I've got to work my way up because these are quite large holes. This is the final size. I think this is about 32 millimeters. 30 millimeters would have been good, but I didn't have a drill bit in that size. This is the same size material and this is the bracket that will mount to the post in the workshop. I cut this off on a bit of an angle because the tool holder is on an angle. I lay out and center punch four mounting holes. I drill those out over on the drill press. This view will probably give you a better idea on how this is all going to work and how those two pieces are connected to the main tool holder. I tack all that in place and then I go and test it back on the machine and then come back and fully weld it off camera. The next step is to mount it to the post at one end and I pre-drill some holes here for the bolts. Then those bolts are screwed in. This bracket will hold up the other end. I need to cut out a piece so that it clears the splashback in the lathe. That bracket also needs a 12mm hole drilled in it. That will be how it's fixed at this end. Now this is the tricky bit. I need to weld the bracket on the end while it's all in the lathe. And it's a little bit hard getting in here. So I do this off camera. I fully welded it off camera and the top here has the correct angle on it so that it will be level when fitted. Now I work on the bar that holds up that end of the tool rack. This is 20mm round bar. I turn the end down to 12mm. The next step is to cut a M12 thread into the end here. I test the nut on the thread and that works great. Now the gap here, that's fine. That's less than the five millimeters that this thread sticks through the bracket. I fit the bar through the bracket and screw on the nut and then lock that nut down. The next step is to figure out some kind of bracket up the top here that can be screwed to the pieces of wood. For that I'm going to use a bit of this angle iron. I mark out and center punch for three screw holes. And those are drilled out in the drill press. And because I'm using countersunk screws, I countersink those holes as well. Now the bracket needs a bit of an extension to reach the bar that goes up. And I found this plate that was used for something else. This is not elegant, but it is going to be as strong as an ox. The round bar is clamped to the plate, and then I do a few tacks while it's in place. I take it down and weld it properly. And now I'm cleaning all the surface rust off the bar with the wire wheel. I tidy up the areas with a flap disc where I've trimmed off the excess. Now I've bolted everything back in place again and this bar holds all of the weight but there is some wobble here as expected. So I'm going to make some kind of bracket that goes onto the tool holder and then onto the splashback of the lathe. I drill a hole in the splashback and I'll be able to use this hole to mark out onto the mounting bracket later. I need to make a little filler piece that helps support the bracket. I clean up that filler piece on the belt grinder. This is the bracket that I welded on. 
I've only tacked it in one place at the moment, so I need to put some more support in here, and that's what that filler piece is for. It just fits in there like, uh, there's a screwdriver. Yeah, it kind of fits in there like, ah, uh, like that, yeah. Now that gets welded in place. It still needs a bit more support, so I weld another block at the top here. Now I mentioned before some of the pieces in this build are not elegant, but as a famous YouTube home machinist says, I think it works. That plate was a little long, so I cut the excess off. And then I come back and tidy it up with the flat disc. This is where I marked out the hole through the splashback. I need to drill an 8mm hole in there for the bolt. Everything is pretty much done, so now it's wiping everything down with acetone so that it can be painted. I start with some primer and once that's dry I come back and put a top coat on. This tool holder is really solid and it's quite heavy so I've got my son helping me install it. It's fixed to this post at this end. And then at the other end, we put that bar through there. And a nut is put on the bottom. And at the top, that bracket gets screwed to the beam in the ceiling. The nut is tightened up, and then that is pretty solid. And that's going to take all of the weight. Now to stop it moving sideways and to keep it parallel with the splashback, I use a bolt and nut to go through this bracket. And you'll see that I'm using nylock nuts everywhere here, just to make sure they don't come loose. This is the best part of the project, putting all the tools on. And the tailstock tools. Those are all the tools in the tool holder, but there's a bit of a gap here. Oh, there's someone at the door. Wonder who that is. Ah, I wonder. Yep, those are my new tool holders. So there it is fully stocked up. Starting from the left, those three tools are left hand tools. The next three are right hand tools. Next to that I have a parting tool and another standard tool. Then we have the eight new tool holders. The tailstock tools are at the back. On the right hand side we have boring bars and other tools that are facing tools. I've even put my dial gauge in this extra wide holder here, but I'm not going to leave that there because I don't want that damaged. As mentioned, all of the weight is held up by that bar on the left and this bracket on the wooden post. That screw down the bottom there doesn't take any weight, it just keeps the tool holder parallel. Well, this was a fun project and this is certainly going to organise these tools a lot better for me. I hope there are some ideas here if you need to do the same to your lathe and your tool holders. I hope everyone has a great day and once again, thanks for watching.